where she is. morning. A very warm welcome to everyone. TGIS. Thank God it's Sunday, and this particular Sunday is also All Saints Sunday. Certainly in our community, we honor those uh, every six months, which we did this past Wednesday. But certainly we're, we're grateful to remember those who have gone before us and now have entered eternity, their eternal rest. Uh, we're continuing with the, the Names of God uh, series today. Uh, let's begin with that great hymn, For All the Saints, on page 2.
continue with our invocation at the top of page 3. On this All Saints Sunday, we gather as beloved people of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very very present present help help in trouble. trouble. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God God of Jacob Jacob is our fortress. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made made heaven heaven and and earth. earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you you forgave forgave the the iniquity iniquity of of my my sin. sin. We take a moment of silence for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, we confess confess that we are are by nature nature sinful and unclean. unclean. We have sinned sinned against against you in thought, thought, word, and and deed, by what we have have done and by what we have have left undone. undone. We have have not not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have have not not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the the sake sake of your Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, have have mercy mercy on us, us, forgive us, us, renew us, us, and lead us, so that that we may delight delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God, bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue with the hymn, top of page 4.
thy spirit. Let us pray. God of all blessing, you're awesome in every way. You have gathered people of all times and places into one family of faith. As we look upward, let us see your majesty and holiness like Isaiah. As we look inward, let us see your mercy and grace as the forgiven people of God. And as we look outward, let us see opportunities to lift high the cross of Jesus. Empower us to encourage others with the victory we have in Christ. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your, your Son, Son, our Lord, our Lord who lives and reigns with, with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God, now and now forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn the page for our next hymns. The, His Name is Wonderful is our theme hymn for our message series. So we've been singing it every Sunday for this series. <clears throat> from Isaiah chapter 6, also the basis of God's word to us today. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. Two wings covered their faces, two covered their feet, and two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me! I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the king. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? 
and who will go for us? And he said, uh, here am I, send me. He said, said, go "Go and tell tell this people, people, be ever ever hearing, hearing, but never never understanding, understanding, ever ever seeing, seeing, but but never never perceiving. perceiving. Make Make the the heart heart of of this this people calloused, calloused, their their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, turn and be healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. turn to the top of page 7 for our Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called called rabbi rabbi by by others. others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for they have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted." This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God God the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of heaven heaven and earth, and and in in Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, his his only only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, died, and was was buried. buried. He descended descended into into hell. The third third day he he rose rose again again from the dead. dead. He ascended ascended into into heaven heaven and sits at the right hand hand of God the Father Father Almighty. From From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Holy Christian Church, Church, the the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy, holy, holy 
us pray. Gracious God, you are indeed holy. As we sing about your holiness, we pray your Holy Spirit would touch your hearts and lives through your word so we may get a greater glimpse, like Isaiah, of what that means for us in our lives today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace as we hear your word. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Feel free to follow the outline of the message on page 10 if you'd like to today. Do so. There was a father that asked his daughter what she was drawing. She said, Daddy, I'm drawing a picture of God. And Dad said, Well, no one's ever seen God. And she said, They will when I'm finished. (laughs) You know, God is a spirit. And the good news is He's revealed Himself to us through, uh, through His names, His character and nature. Today, God is holy. Isaiah caught a glimpse of God's holiness. See, Isaiah was probably the greatest prophet in all of Israel. Uh, He prophesied during the reign of four kings over a period of 60 years. What was the, the, the atmosphere like at that time? It was filled with political controversy, moral corruption, spiritual indifference. Does that sound like the 21st century to you? It really does, doesn't it? Verse 1 said, In the year King Uzziah died. Uzziah reigned in the southern kingdom of Judah for 52 years. One of the better kings, as he was faithful to God, they prospered. He also uh, turned Jerusalem into a fortified city, giving the people security. But in 2 Chronicles we read, After Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord. He entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. And you know, that was a no-no because only the priests were allowed to do that. So he arrogantly claimed for himself the right God gave to the priests. He was struck with leprosy. He died And his death became a time of national mourning, much like when uh, President Kennedy passed in the the 60s. So Isaiah goes into the temple to find comfort in the midst of his grief. One of the blessings we have here at the Bluffs is every six months we have remembrance services. So those who've lost loved ones can come and be encouraged, comforted in the midst of their grief. Generally, every six months, roughly 40-plus staff or residents, uh, loved ones, enter their eternal rest. So it's one of the great blessings we can do to encourage those and comfort them in the midst of loss. And so Isaiah's in the temple, and he gets an amazing vision like John had in the book of Revelation. And as he saw, it says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty, exalted, the train of his robe filled the temple. I don't know about you, I would have gone, wow. I mean, what amazing. It says, I saw the Lord. You notice Lord is all lowercase letters. When you see Lord lowercase, it's Adonai. It speaks of God's sovereignty. He's king of kings, Lord of lords. There is no king higher than Adonai the true God. Isaiah is probably saying, in the year we lost the human king, I got the glimpse of the real king. He's on the throne. He's in control. That that must have been very comforting. Now imagine what it must have been like to see the train of his robe filling the temple. A pastor I knew collected model trains. He says, This is the first reference to uh, locomotives in the Bible. I think he was stretching that a little bit. Well, when Princess Diana got married, her train was 25 feet long. A a, a bride from Romania had a train, get this, 1.85 miles long. Don't trip on that puppy. The length of one's train was an indication of royalty, status, and importance. 
Well, there was no train higher than the Almighty God. And so what God is saying to us is, in the chaotic times in which we live in the 21st century, our God rules and reigns. He's in control. We don't have to fear. That was the message to Isaiah. That's the message to us today in the 21st century. Then in verse 2, it goes on and uh, it says, The seraphim, were, which had six wings, two covered the face, two the feet, two flew. They were saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now notice, Lord, when it's all capitalized, that's Yahweh, right? I am who I am. So, Lord, different things, lowercase Adonai, high case, Yahweh, the, the name God declared to Moses, I am who I am. I think, you know, as you, you think about the, the uh, wings covering their face was because when you're in the presence of holiness, wow, that, that's hard to see. Covered their feet kind of speaks of humility, and they could go where God asked them to go so they could uh, serve God what he wanted them to do. And so they, they, what are they declaring? Holy, holy, holy is the Yahweh of uh, Sabaoth, Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Why is holy repeated three times? I'm so glad you asked that question. I'll tell you next week. Oh, you can't wait that long. Okay, well, if you must. The Jewish people use uh, repetition when they wanted to emphasize something, much like we have uh, a bold capital letters or something of that nature. So holiness is the only attribute of God that's repeated in Scripture. I believe three times in succession to elevate its uh, importance. God never uses uh, love, love, love or... Uh, powerful, 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 or eternal, eternal, eternal. That's all true, which is very true, but he's holy. Three is the perfect number, and so they're declaring, Lord God, you're perfect in your holiness. An American pastor by the name of R.C. Sproul said, any attempt to understand God apart from his holiness is idolatry. How true, how true. You know, Abraham Lincoln, during the Gettysburg Address in 1863, declared the Civil War battlefield in Pennsylvania to be hallowed ground, set apart because there were people who laid down their lives for others in what they believed. And so he set it aside as holy ground. And it's important for us to realize we are set apart, we are holy ground. C.S. Lewis said this, there are no ordinary people. You've never talked to a mere mortal. Nations, culture, art, civilizations are mortal, and their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. Next to the blessed sacrament itself, get this, our neighbor is the holiest object presented to our senses. Let that sink in. Look to the person on your left, Look to the person on your right, in front and back. Your neighbor, that loved one, is the holiest object presented to our senses. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Christ in us, the hope of glory. What would happen if we treated one another that way? Would make a huge difference, wouldn't it? No matter what they're going through, no matter if they have dementia or uh, Parkinson's or just aging in place or in great pain it doesn't matter to God it shouldn't matter to us they are one whom God loves and died for himself personally wow what a blessing and then it says the whole earth is full of his glory glory uh, adds means weightiness or value and so the the majesty and glory of God is, is weighty. And as, as people age, you know, we're asked to honor and respect our seniors. We value them for their years, their wisdom. We honor them. And how much more so God? You know, the psalmist said, Worship Yahweh in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. And so we look upward and see the Lord's majesty. And that's why we come to worship. We worship God 
for his character, his nature, for his holiness. And then as Isaiah got this glimpse of of heaven, of, of God, what was his first response? He said, woe to me. I'm ruined. I'm a person of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. He realized God was holy and he wasn't. But that's not the end of the story. You see, um, yes, he got a glimpse of God's majesty, but then he got a glimpse of who he was in response to the one who created him. And he knew he fell far short. There was a Sunday school teacher giving an assignment for uh, next, next week and said, I want you to all read the 17th chapter of Mark in preparation for our lesson online. Well, next week, people gather. He said, all of you who've prepared for the lesson by reading Mark 17, stand up. About half the class stands up. And then the teacher said, well, the rest of you don't have to take the surprise quiz because there is no Mark chapter 17. Oh, they were trying to fudge it a little bit. We don't always realize how far we fall short. Little Willie's mom found him with the, his hand in the cookie jar. Mom said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm fighting temptation, Mommy. I'm fighting temptation. See, when we stand in the presence of God in the light, the light always reveals the darkness. So God didn't say, well, too bad for you, Isaiah, uh, next But the angel, the seraph, came to him with the coal from the altar, touched his lips, you're forgiven, you're loved, your sin has been atoned for. And I believe that kind of prefigures Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who would lay his life down for us, who would go to the cross and shed his blood and rise victoriously so sin, death, and hell could be conquered forever. So Isaiah got a touch of the mercy of God. It didn't leave him in his guilt or his shame but it washed and cleansed and purified him. There was a husband gave his wife a beautiful skunk coat on their anniversary. The wife said, I don't understand how such a nice coat could come from a, such a foul-smelling beast. The husband said, hey, I don't ask for much, but at least you could show me some respect. Well, we're all like skunks that no longer stink. Our sin smell has been taken away, removed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so the aroma that we send off as being a love forgiven child of God is sweet. It's holy. And that's why we're the loved and forgiven people of God living in his glory each and every day. So he looked upward and saw the Lord's majesty. He looked inward and saw the amazing mercy and grace of God. And then finally it says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah, here I am, send me. And then God said, go and tell this people who won't listen, who won't change, but you go anyway. Think about that. Did you notice the little word us? Who will go for us? In the Hebrew, it's plural, It gives us the Old Testament evidence for the existence of the Trinity. Now, I don't think Isaiah understood all that, nor did the Old Testament. But with new covenant eyes in Christ, we know God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One God, three three persons. Here I am. I will go on this mission. I'll go to the people and who won't listen, who won't change, who uh, maybe a heart or two did. I'm sure that's the case, but... All in all, the culture did not listen to God and things didn't look so good at the end. But yeah, God was still filled with grace. God was still filled with mercy. And so we're called to be G-rated people in a triple X world, are we not? We're called to go and uh, be a blessing. And I've, I've seen a lot of senior saints here in this place. And when I was a chaplain at Concordia Village that loved Jesus, that made a difference for him, that... Uh, served Jesus with a smile. And sometimes some of them were in intense pain. Some of them were uh, uh, grieving. 
Some of them could barely move, but they prayed. They made a difference. They were there saying, Lord, you're not finished with me yet, so until you are, I'm going to go for Jesus. How's that sound? That, that is good news, isn't it? So my, the question is, what does here am I, send me, look like to you today? What does that mean for you, each person here? It means we look upward, we see God's holy. We look inward and see His mercy and grace. We're, we're loved and forgiven as a, a sinner, a sinner saint. And we look outward and there's a, a, a mission field with rich opportunities to make a difference, whether that would be staff, whether that would be um, residents, uh, other families. We're here to keep going, going, going. I close with D.L. Moody, a pastor that died at the end of the uh, 19th century. He said, I am only one, I am one, I can't do everything, I can do something, and that which I can do by the grace of God, I will do. Grace is in you from heaven to keep go, go, going for Jesus. Amen? And amen. Well, turn the page. We have our prayers of the day. We close each petition with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, just a reminder, uh, grief support meets this Monday at 3.30 in the veterans room. So see Chaplain Carla if that's uh, helpful for you. Uh, let us pray. We celebrate with all the saints of heaven today as we honor the name of Jesus. We come with gratitude in our hearts and worship the Lord and the beauty of His holiness. Like Isaiah, we look up and see the Lord's majesty, His mercy, and uh, His mission to keep making a difference for Jesus. So empower us by Your grace to be a blessing to others today, this week. Lord, in Your mercy. And You've called us to pray for those in authority. So we pray for President Joe Biden, Governor Mike Parson, all those who serve with civil authority. We lift them up and we pray that the, the, the hands of heaven, the grace of God, would touch those that lead our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As always, we're grateful for those who have served in the armed forces, who lay down their lives for us in, in whatever capacity that may be. We pray that you'd be with them, comfort their families, uh, protect them for such a time as this. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer, prayer. Lord, we live in a world of brokenness, injustice, war, famine, unemployment, mental illness. There's all kinds of uh, injustice going on. And there's healing and forgiveness for those in the midst of loss suffering due to violence, hunger, homelessness, of whatever the need may be. And so we would ask for your, the body of Christ, the church, would go and make a difference to those around them, to keep praying, to keep uh, sending clothes and food to support those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are so grateful we can be part of the body of Christ for such a time as this. And so I thank you for our staff, I thank you for those who serve our residents and make a difference in so many ways, for caregivers, for family. What a blessing. Continue to encourage them. For our ED, Lynn Spriggs, our CEO, Adam Marles, we're so grateful to be part of this Bluffs community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And on this All Saints Sunday, we all know those who have uh, gone before us, who've entered their eternal rest, so we come with gratitude in our hearts for the resurrection of eternal lives. We remember them today. We ask that you'd comfort those who still may be sad, particularly for Doreen Kronz in our independent living community, and many, many others, those who we named this Wednesday, those who we named before you last year. And so we, we ask that those names that are on our hearts and minds would be comforted would be lifted up. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We especially pray healing grace for Fred and Fran Adams as she is under hospice care and reach. 
Shelly, a granddaughter of Nancy Keller, uh, who has a stand in her heart to carry chemotherapy medication. Joan Walton, healing for her arm. Merle, as he continues to recover uh, from surgery. Uh, Morris and Joyce Holstetter's daughter, Susan. Elizabeth Dames, a granddaughter of a resident with anxiety issues. Uh, our staff, uh, Cass, Paul, Chaplain Carlo's brother, Drew, and others who need your healing touch and grace today. Lift them up, comfort them with the, the manna of heaven. And now you invite us to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the medicine of forgiveness, your healing grace upon us, so we may continue to express your grace to those around us. Whatever prayers may be on our heart, we pray the prayer you taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our invitation to the Lord's Supper as we sing it a cappella to the tune of Come Ye Thankful, People Come. May the good Lord be with you and with you his servant too lift your hearts to god in praise to the lord our hearts we raise let us offer praises true it is proper so to do to the lord be thanks and praise for his love that crowns our days. The Lord suffers for Christians, members of the body of Christ, who know they're sinners saved by grace through faith in Jesus alone. Do you believe the body and blood of Christ is present in, with, and under the bread and wine? I believe, I believe this bread, bread is your body, blood. and this wine, this wine is, is your blood. blood. Do you wish to receive the many blessings of this sacrament? I wish, I wish to receive, to receive forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, sins eternal life, and salvation. salvation. Open my heart to the truth of Jesus' words, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes. The Lord Jesus Christ, the same night he was betrayed, took the bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this often to remember me. The same manner also after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often to remember me. The peace and grace, love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. For our communion distribution this morning as we sing Lamb of God, we invite our communion team to receive communion. When they're finished, we invite you to come forward as well as we sing the hymns in the bulletin. We ask that you extend your palm for the host and the cup. There's baskets on the side for the cup. Uh, if you're not able to come forward, we'll come out to you. Please raise your hand so no one is missed for communion. Uh, if you'd like a blessing, just cross your arms. If you'd like a, a prayer of blessing, we'd be honored to do that as well. All is ready. We, we join together in Lamb of God as the communion team comes forward. <laughs>
Christ for you. As you receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ. know you're a loved and forgiven child of God. Continue to serve him with joy and go in his peace. Amen. I invite you to come forward as we sing the hymns. body of Christ for you. Sharon, receive the body of Christ. Again, the body of Christ for you. Morris, the body of Christ for you. Kate, the body of Christ for you. Shirley, receive the body of Christ.
body and blood of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he give you strength. Amen. Not the body and blood of Christ for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Jesus Which bless the body you. and blood of Christ for you. Amen. Arnie, the body and blood of Christ for you. Receive the body and blood of Christ. to turn the page to the top of page 15 for our blessing and hymn of thanksgiving. As you've received the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you in your walk with Jesus. Go forth from here as a loved, forgiven child of God. Go in His peace, His grace, and His joy. Amen. Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, 
Let your your holy holy angel angel be with me, that that the the evil foe foe may have have no power power over me. Amen. Amen. Before we have our benediction, any of our precious dear ones who would help wheel our care center residents back home would be greatly appreciated. The Lord bless and keep you. His face shine upon you. The Lord look with favor and grant you his peace. May all of our living resound with thanksgiving to Father, Son, and Spirit our praises increase.